Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Bush Block Homestead. Today I thought we'd have a look at our power system. We've done a bit of an upgrade, installed some more solar panels on the system. First thing I'll note, you'll see a bit of shadowing on the panels. Now that we're in um, June here in Australia, we're just in the start of winter, so the sun is obviously lower and we're getting a bit of shading from this tree in front of the house and also one over here you can see the sun there is a lot lower in midsummer it's nearly directly over top of us so we were having oh, we weren't having too many issues but it was taking a lot longer for the batteries to charge where before they'd be charged by 9 10 o'clock in the morning depend on the amount of power we used overnight they might, may not get charged until 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon with the existing two kilowatts on the panels with the existing two kilowatts on the roof so ignore these these are panels here to do with the solar hot water system and the 12 volt pump system which we will go through on another episode today we're looking at the main power system for the house which is the 240 volts well the 48 volt DC set up to 240 volts through the inverter. So I've gone through the existing system before, we'll just have a quick overview. So on the back here we have 2 kilowatts of panels, there's 12 panels, oh it's just over 2 kilowatts, they're 190 watts each. They were from a, well, we bought them new a few years back for a grid connect system and we reused them here out in the bush block. And these front panels, there is also 12 of them, but as you can see, they stretch out further because they're a bigger panel. They are 250 watt panels, 12 of them, so 3 kilowatts. So in total, we're looking at 5 kilowatts of power. As you can see, you can see that shadowing there on the panels. So how they're wired up, they're separated into four groups of three, and each three panels so the first three panels they're wired in series then the next and the, and so on which separates them into four separate strings but we'll call that one bank and basically we get around 110 to 115 volts off each string so three panels wired together and all them cables separately which I have to clean up yet a job later today I'm going to clean up all these cables and cable tie everything so there's eight pair um, four pairs of cables running down into conduit underneath here so eight cables in total so we've got a pair coming off the first string of three then another pair another pair and another pair and that does give us some advantages as you can see shadowing here the shadowing on these panels does not affect the output of these panels because they are on a different string. So these will be putting out full output where if they were connected all together that shadowing would affect those other panels in the in the string. Also we are limited to the voltage input of the inverter. Being an MPPT inverter we can from memory I think we can put in up to 120 volts but I could be wrong there but anyway the three panels in series gives us around 110 to 115 volts and that's within the inverters input specifications because the inverter is an all-in-one unit with the solar charge controller built in. The inverter we have actually has two charge controllers built in so this two kilowatt of panels the original two kilowatts goes into one charge controller and this other three kilowatts goes into the second charge controller in the inverter and we'll have a look at that shortly so yeah just installing this extra three kilowatts which more than doubles what we had allows our battery bank to charge up a lot quicker especially now in winter that the sun is a lot lower in the horizon now we got these panels fairly cheap they're actually second hand we bought, actually bought six kilowatts of panels at $100 a panel. So obviously that's $3,000 for six kilowatts of panels. So we've got three kilowatts of them here, and the other three kilowatts 
is sitting over in the container ready to put on that shed roof once it is completed so we'll have three kilowatts over there and that'll become a workshop and we'll have a look at the construction of that in another upcoming video so yeah we did well getting them secondhand panels at a hundred hundred dollars each for a 240 volt panel we might go have a look at one and I'll just show you what brand and the specs we'll have a look at the spec plate on the back of one over in the container so I just grabbed a panel out of the container and you can see the specs on it there if we got focus you know they're a 250 watt panel APS solar module a quick look at that we just got a bolt bundle some of them may or may not be faulty it's the risk you take when you're buying these secondhand panels I did have this one on the roof but I took it down it does test okay but you can see by the um, that'll pick up see the green corrosion in there well, it shows there's had water ingress in the panel at some stage so I thought I'd pull that off the house roof and switch it with another panel that looked all right and I'll leave this for further testing later on apparently where I got these they are from well there's a company that sells these secondhand and they pick them up from insurance jobs apparently on grid connect systems down in the city if a claim is made say if one panel goes bad in a full system the insurance job the insurance company just changes the whole system and gets rid of the whole the whole lot of the panels on the roof even though there may only be one faulty panel in the whole setup so that's how they get the panels and some of the panels they come across can be only six months old and because one has gone faulty the insurance company replaces the whole lot and this company can buy the panels very cheaply and obviously sell them cheap at a hundred dollars each for a 250 watt panel so they you do have the risk that one may or may not be faulty but they do generally test the ones they get before selling them to the public well here we are at the back of the house and you see them two sets of conduit that's where the panels the cables from the panels come down from the roof so the one on the left side is the original two kilowatts and it has an earth cable in that small conduit strapped to it and this conduit on the right or in the middle of the box there is the three kilowatts of panels coming down into this break, DC breaker box so we'll have a look inside originally when I set this up I set it up with uh, four sets originally I thought I might have four banks of panels We'll end up just use having the two banks as the roof is pretty full now and that should be ample so I'll be using these bus bars elsewhere so this setup here is for the two kilowatts of panels and this is for the new or well the three kilowatts just set up on the front and as you can see there's four breakers as I said earlier up on the roof the 12 panels are divided up into four sets of three so each these DC breakers this is the three kilowatt setup you can this controls the first set of three second set of three third and fourth so it, even though we got to run more cables initially this helps with maintenance and also testing so we can grab a meter and test between we've got the ground here under this cover so we can test between ground and the first set three panels check their voltage check the voltage and check any voltage differences between the sets of panels and also for maintenance we can shut down a set of three panels and still have the other panels working so we've still got power coming in even though if we've got one string of panels disconnected so that's why we've done it in that way you've got to run more cables and have more breakers but it just gives you more test points to test for any faults and also repairs you can do repairs in the future just by shutting down that section so that's how all that works this bus bar down here is for the ground that connects to ground and as I said these are just spares which will probably be coming out and I'll probably use that over on the shed system in the future when that's all done so also in this um, box here where the breakers are it acts as a combiner box so all those strings which are separated here get combined here which then becomes the 
3 kilowatt bank and that's all tied together at that point there. So all the positives are tied together here for the 3 kilowatts of solar panels and this is where the positives are tied together for the set of 2 kilowatts and this is where the negatives are tied together there. Well here we are in the power shed. I've started to put labels on things so you can see the generator input. We've got AC breakers. So this is AC out to the house from the inverter. You got the generator breaker, that's the generator input if we need to charge batteries or run the house on a generator. Now this is coming from that DC solar pan uh, DC breaker panel on the house. And these are you can see that controls the two kilowatt bank and there's the other three kilowatt bank there. So these are DC breakers, over here these are AC breakers. Breakers for the banks of panels, so they've been tied together in that other box on the back of the house. So then we have two, two cables from each bank coming in, a positive and a negative. So we've got the positive and negative coming in for, from the two kilowatts and then the positive and negative coming in for the three kilowatts. And they're coming in underground and coming into these breakers. So from there we come along the conduit along the wall and we come into the inverter. Now this inverter has two solar regulators built in. So as we can see underneath, you might be able to read that, we have PV input 1 and PV input 2. So this is the input here for our 2 kilowatts we had initially and this is the input for 3 kilowatts. And if we have a look up here, it's only early in the morning, you can see our combined input at the moment is 923 watts. And I can switch between banks. You can see the two panels represented on that diagram. So if I switch to our one, our first bank, which is the two kilowatt bank, we're putting in around 340 watts. Our other three kilowatt bank, we're putting in around 560, and that's the two banks combined. The peak I've seen at the moment, being in winter, has been around 1.5 kilowatts from the five kilowatt system, just because of the shadowing and because the sun is that much lower than normal in summer. Over here, you can see our battery bank is currently at 96.1%. And going into the batteries is 650 watts. So that's the power going into the batteries where we've got 900 total. Where the other power difference there will be going into the house to run the fridge and whatever else is running at the moment. And on here you can see our current battery voltage. And you can see the individual battery voltages down here. So as I said before, this is a 48 volt bank, each battery is 12 volts, and four batteries wired in series is 48, and we have three parallel strings there. So they, this set's all wired together, then this set and this set to, what, to make 48 volts, and then they're parallel strings. So we've got three parallel strings of 48 volt bank at, from what I remember, 660 amp hours. See there, that's the voltages of the individual batteries on the balances. I did have a problem with one meter here, I replaced, it just failed and I just replaced it with a new meter on the balancer, which was not a problem. I just had to calibrate that meter first on a power supply, I just set the power supply up at 14 volts and calibrated that meter at 14 volts and then as I did originally with all the other meters so the meters should be pretty much identical on the battery balances there. See I've explained this setup before if you want to see you should be able to go back through the videos and there'll be a power shed setup video which will show the, the fuses and the breakers for this inverter. And we've got room on the wall there for future expansion. I was thinking originally for wind generator input, but here I've noticed it normally just blows. If, if it is windy, it'll blow through the day and then there's nothing at night. 
that being the case it's just far cheaper and easier to put in extra solar panels rather than put in a wind generator because the cost of the tower is as much as the wind generator and if it's not blowing at night well there's no reason to really install a wind generator but who knows in the future what we might do so yeah that's the upgrade we've done to the current house power system so that 5 kilowatt system will help out immensely in the coming summer. Last summer was really hot and in the peak of summer they'll be putting out oh, nearly maximum power and we're looking at by next summer to install a split system air conditioning system in the house. As this last summer we are in a big drought and it was extremely hot. We were looking at over 40 degree Celsius days. We're in winter at the moment and it is a nice at the moment I'm thinking around 15 to 15, 16 degrees C here in Queensland Australia well where we are we don't get much of a winter I think this morning was the coldest it's been here and it was 8 degrees Celsius in the house which is really nothing for a winter winter's day it's the summers here we got to worry about with the heat it gets extremely hot and last year was nearly unbearable and wouldn't really matter how much insulation you had in the house yeah it's just outside it was over 40 degrees celsius and yeah part of the reason for the solar panel upgrade is so we can install a split system air conditioning system in the house for next summer plus it also helps offset the power loss in winter due to the low arc of the sun and the shadowing from the tree so here's one of the trees causing some of the trouble for the shadowing on the panels. They're not in real good condition and we're going to chop this tree down altogether. It's got a lot of dead, dead limbs and these old gums, they have a habit of dropping limbs. You can hear big cracks in the night and you'll hear a whole tree fall down. The other day I chopped out this front section so I just climbed the tree and cut that. So I'm going to basically thin the top and then we'll drop the whole tree. When we first come here you can see here this bushy tree well it used to be a big tree these are it's just all offshooted again from the main stump which you probably can't see but the main stump there is underground and this is just all shot back all bushy and we just keep that trimmed down below roof height so we'll probably do the same with this other one though this tree here we might cut it off around three or four foot up off the ground and it might reshoot and just push out from there. We'll do that first and see how it goes. But yeah, we're going to trim a few trees around the house. Also, this tree here, you can see the dead limbs hanging out over the driveway and also over the back of the house. Just trim the dead limbs. Yeah, but this tree here will be coming down, which will help our solar, which is unfortunate. It was a nice tree but it didn't like the the drought we had over summer and it's not really in good condition and a lot of these old gums on the property are the same if we have a look down the back you can probably see there's a lot of dead limbs in a lot of those old gums but once we get all this work done on the house we can start some clearing of the old dead trees well there's a bit of a rundown of what we've been up to lately with the power system. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you again next time. See ya.